All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Gregory Johnson, and we're going to be speaking to you all today about the Yangli Edge Singularity in ON models. So let's go ahead and get started. So the most common example of an ON model is the icing model. So plot of the icing model phase diagram, a very common phase diagram. In the top left, so the vertical axis, H is our magnetic field. The horizontal axis, T, is our temperature. So we know the icing model has some second order phase transition at a temperature TC. And below this, we expect a first order line of phase transitions, because if we vary H through the origin, we're going to get a first order phase transition. So what this picture is, is a line of first order phase transitions ending in a critical point. And that seems to be everything. But we know that the proper setting for thermodynamic functions, like the magnetization, is really the complex plane. So the complex, complex H plane. So if we were to look at this picture where we can allow H to be complex, it would look much different. Yes, the line of first order phase transitions would end in a critical point, but after that, it would bifurcate into complex conjugate pairs of singularity that go off in the complex plane. So these are you known in the bottom left where the bifurcating critical point goes off along the red lines. And these red lines are what's known as the Yangli edge singularities. So we see they only occur for T is greater than TC. So if we look at some temperature, cut a blue line through for T is greater than TC and just look at the complex H plane there, we would see that a gap is formed and we can freely continue H through the origin. So that means that this is a crossover. There's no phase transition there. So really what the yang edge singularities are doing, they're giving us the physics of these crossovers. So the story here that the yang edge singularities lie at purely imaginary values of the external field is the same story for all icing-like theories. So this is for all Owen models. So just two Owen models to talk about, to point out what they are. So n is equal to one is our icing. n is equal to four is, Carol, is related to Carol, Carol QCD. And again, it's the thermodynamics crossovers that we were talking about here. So just to summarize the what, the one, how of this whole thing, well, the what is the yang the edge singularity and it's a critical point, and it's distinct from the ON critical point. By distinct, I mean it carries its own critical data, and this is well studied. It's a phi cube theory with a purely imaginary coupling. Furthermore, this Yangli edge singularity in the context of an ON model actually augments the ON critical data because the location of the Yangli edge singularity is universal. And it was previously unknown. I do want to put an asterisk there, big asterisk. So, the way that we could see this is by looking at the universal magnetic equation of state. Variable T bar here, it's going to be related to just the difference from TC. So here M is equal to H to the 1 over delta, where delta is one of our critical exponents, times some scaling function FG of Z. So Z here is some combination of T, T bar, and H. And so what this magnetic equation of state allows us to do is take two non-universal inputs, this HC and this T bar, and create a universal location, ZC. So this ZC is what augments our critical data as the universal location of the yang edge singularity. And this is the same picture for all the Owen theories. So how do we see this? Well, when we look at the QCD phase diagram, we expect that the Carroll phase transition is or belongs to an O4 universality class. And assuming that the yang edge singularity is the nearest singularity to the origin, this allows us to get an estimate for the radius convergence of the chemical potential expansion. For more details on this, you can see Vladimir Skakov's talk. So how do we study this thing? Well, we use the functional renormalization group. And with this approach, we could probe the complex fields and parameters just fine. To use it, we take a derivative expansion, which is systematic. And this might be a slight abuse of terminology, but we have a next to leading order result that we, that's so-called LPA prime. And from here, we want to compute ZC for 3D ON models. But furthermore, the FRG, the functional normalization group, allows us to vary in at the dimension D. So we can additionally test mean field, the mean field limit, and the large end limit. So off to our results. So on the left, I have ZC versus D for different ON models. So I have icing in blue, O2 in orange, 04 in green and a large end limit in red, 0100. So we see that they all have distinct 3D values. 
and they all converge to their mean field limit as they should, but there is an interesting behavior in the way that they converge to this mean field limit. So then on the right, I have ZC versus N, where these are all 3D values. So 3D ZCs and the leftmost is icing. We see that from icing, it decreases and it dips below the large end limit in a novel way and approaches the large end limit from underneath. And that is all I have to say today. So thank you so much for listening and I look forward to any and all questions.